story, Critical Point, by Christopher Charles. supersonic passenger jet behaved beautifully. And if it weren't for the fact that it was the first time we'd carried passengers, it would have been an ordinary, if not a boring, flight from London to New York. At 40,000 feet, small malfunctions started to appear in the aircraft's various guidance systems. It had happened before in the test flights, mere teething troubles. But on this flight, I felt a certain uneasiness, a nagging doubt that all was not well. But, Captain, we've had that guidance problem before. Yes, Dave, I know that. So why the frown? Well, this time it's different. By the way, we've got a security officer on board. Oh? What's his name? Oh, Mr. Stewart, I think. Yeah, Mr. Stewart, I was wondering if you'd like a cup of tea. Oh, I won't say no, Tar. All right, you are, then. Three teas up in flight deck, please. Fine. Give me a few moments. So, Mr. Stewart, you're here to protect us, is that it? Well, not only you, but the passengers as well. <laughs> there are four of us. Me and three other blokes back there in the cabin. This is a routine flight. And granted, this is the first time we've had passengers on board. Well, they're very important passengers, so I'm told. Uh-oh. Looks like we're still having troubles, Dave. Look at number two. Mm. Revving a bit above normal, Captain. Alarm light as well. Uh, what caused that? I'm not sure. Not sure? Well, it could be a lot of things. Trouble with the fuel injector corrector and a tiny bit of dirt, maybe. Oh, anyway, it's been corrected. And at this stage, that's all that matters. Here's your tea. Oh, and the sugar is there. Oh, Tom, miss. <laughs> See you in the galley. Mm -mm, not likely. She's married. Uh -huh. I was married. My wife was killed a number of years ago. Accident? No, she was murdered. <sighs> I'm sorry. It was a long time ago, as I said. 1959, the year. 1959. That was the year that I... No, oh, it's not important. Go on. Well, it's not a tale that I like relating. Sounds interesting. Well, it happened in the Belgian Congo. don't know the name of the country now. I hadn't been flying long. I, I was with the East African Airways at the time. An appeal for volunteers was made. The date was... I'll never forget it. 24th of November, 1959. Well, I, I heard about this flying of refugees out of the Congo, and it appealed to me. Well, to cut a long story short, I, I signed up for the job, if you could call it that. I flew to the Congo, and in the beginning, it was very exciting. We skipped around the country like crickets, evacuating refugees from the most obscure places. And that was in the beginning. And then the tragedy of the whole thing struck me. It was at a place called Musadi. That's the place down there. Looks like we have to get in and out of it really fast. The strip's crawling with timber. Okay, Dave, take it down to 50 feet. We'll just clear those trees. Take on refugees, then there's enough runway left to clear straight out. Hold tight. Here we go. Shooting at us. 
Just keep low now. We'll just make the trees at the end. It won't come up. We're overloaded. Come on, Mark. Come on. You're all right. Pull her up now. Up. Are you okay? My left leg. It shattered. Just lie there, mate. I've got to keep this quick in the air. I've been hit in the hand. Should be okay. We're losing height. again for two years. I was too scared. I don't blame you. What a terrible experience. I wondered about that scar in your hand. Oh, I don't think you were lucky. You should have died at Masadi. What? Yes, what the blazes got in here. Evans, Evans, tell me, what did it feel like to pull that trigger on an arm? Sure, and that. then you get that feeling deep inside you in your belly. That feeling that spreads through you like fire. You must probably have a smile on your rock. Why are you... Jesus, what's got into you two? We'll end up in the drink. Watch that guidance control. Oh, no! We're going into a dive! You all right, Dave? Sorry, Captain. What can I do? He lost his mind or something. How is he? Uh, completely out, I'm afraid. Well, he'll have to stay in here. But what happens if he wakes up? <laughs> Sheila, please send in one of the security men. Oh, right away, Captain. Right away. Oh, excuse me, butting in, but that hostess of yours told me I was needed up here. And name's Arnold Jeff, security. Oh, yes, your buddy Stuart caused a spot of bother, I'm afraid. Yeah, I'll look after him. Make sure he doesn't cause any more. Yes, thank you. That would be a great help. Can I take the same to place here? Sure, do that. Uh, uh, Captain, how long before we touch down? Oh, about, uh, let's see, say 17 minutes. Oh, here we go again. Drifting indicators flashing. The electric trim warning lights. Let's get Heathrow. Travel? You're dead right. This is Skybird One calling Heathrow Ground Control. Come in, please, Heathrow. Over. This is Heathrow Ground Control, Joe. Receiving you, Skybird One, over. Uh, Heathrow, we're experiencing some trouble with one engine. A little over-revving. Apart from that, the ADS system is playing up. We're losing our trim and drifting slightly. This isn't too serious as I can adjust it manually, but the situation is deteriorating. There's nothing here to show why that flight computer didn't make the small adjustment. No short circuits or anything like that. The situation is becoming rather worrying. Over. Skybird One, everything down here is registering that you're having a perfect flight. In fact, it couldn't be better. Oh, hold it. Warning lights have just shown up. Two short circuits to be exact. We're monitoring the course at the moment. Having a spot of trouble here as well. Calculus direction on your computer is not being very cooperative, I'm afraid. Sending out rather hazy signals. Dave, check that, will you? Will do. Skybird One, your signals are getting worse. Hardly discernible now. Unless you get that flight computer operating at 100% efficiency, I'm afraid we'll not be able to help you anymore. Over. Heathrow, hey, we're doing the best we can. She's still quite easy to handle, so we're not in any immediate danger. Captain Elliot. What are your chances if you ditch her? Oh, well. Completely out of the question. There's a hurricane down there. And apart from that, mountainous seas. Dash it all, man. You know what the weather's like down there. Not a hope in Hades. It's New York or nothing. Over.
same result. It's unbelievable. Nothing. Hold on. Just one small thing. It looks like a minute pressure drop in the central hydraulic system. Uh, that's it. Can't really position it there. Let's have a look at that. See there? Mm hmm. Hmm. It's tiny enough, though. Hardly discernible. I wonder. Hello, Heathrow Ground Control. Come in, please. Heathrow, come in, please. Over. Receiving you loud and clear. Please identify. Uh, Skybird 1 here, Heathrow. We have a slight pressure drop in the central hydraulic system. It's a very small leak, but it is a leak just the same. If things should come to a head, well, there's still the manual system. But I hope to heaven that it doesn't come to that. Over. Captain Elliot, I'm sorry, but we're rather helpless here until a full analysis computer check is completed. I suggest you hold on until we're able to give you the results. Over. Hey, Heathrow, there's something else. I'd like a full report on the security guard we have here. His name is Andrew Stewart, a cockney. He became hysterical and we had to uh, uh, sedate him. Could you please check with Scotland Yard or Interpol, whoever employed him? Who gave him clearance for this flight, etc.? Over. Well done, Skybird One. Over and out. <sighs> I'll make Mr. Stewart a little more comfortable. This pillow will do for a start. Uh, Mr. Jeff, I, I suggest that you go back to the passenger compartment. Mr. Evans and myself will be rather busy up here. I'll do that. I was sure that our time was limited, but I didn't tell Evans of my fears, as there was no point in distressing him further. With growing apprehension, I registered the slow decay of the aircraft's electrical and guidance systems. An unconscious man, a sick jet, was my responsibility. Critical point. That point where I would lose control of the jet was close. But when... Minutes? Seconds? Skybird 1. Skybird 1, Heathrow here. Come in, please. Over. Skybird 1 here. Receiving you loud and clear. Over. Skybird 1. The location of your trouble spot is directly beneath freight compartment G. This is extremely near the hydraulic center for aileron and rudder trim. This automatic system of direction control is affected by an unknown cause. However, there's no cause for alarm electrical system is duplicated by manual control. Thank you, Heathrow. Over. A frequency to stay open. We'll do, Skybird 1. Over and out. That compartment is not pressurized, so we still can't tell what's up. Well, maybe it'd be better if we didn't see the fault. It might scare me. Maybe. Oh, trim warning lights on again. What's going on? Captain. Captain pressure dropped slightly. That's odd. Now what's going on? Heathrow, Skybird 1 here. Come in, please. Over. Heathrow here, yeah, Skybird 1, over. Our cabin pressure has dropped through two points. Over. There's no indication of that happening here. Are you sure? Over. Of course I'm sure. Emergency indicates the same. Over. Uh, we suggest emergency procedures. I've just been told that our flight computer is no longer in contact with yours. It's completely dead. The computer here has been checked and it's functioning perfectly. We can no longer give you advice. You have approximately ten minutes to touch down, and with regard to cabin pressure, drop altitude to 15,000 feet over. 15,000 feet? There's a heck of a storm down there. Over. There's no alternative. We will inform JFK to let you have the whole airport. Emergency procedure will be followed. Good luck. Over. Thanks, Heathrow. Over. Computer contact gone. Cabin pressure dropping. Vibrations a lot. For some inexplicable reason stemming from freight compartment G. What do you think, Dave? Oh, something broken loose in there. No, it couldn't be. Flight hasn't been rough enough. Well, pity the compartment isn't pressurized, otherwise we can have a look in. It's not pressurized, don't you see? The skin between the compartment and the cabin must be punctured. But how? I've got to take it down to five thousand. It's going to be a rough ride. Pressure's dropping faster than it was. I'm not serious. It's going to get rather cold up here. That's one of the reasons we have to take her down. Now, ready? Ready. Good. Off with the automatic pilot. There we are. Now, steady. I'm going to get her down fast. Five, thirteen. Twenty-five, thirteen. Two, thirteen. Twelve, nine. Ten, forty-five. Smooth her out now. Twenty-three, ten. 
15, 10. We're nearly there. There. Oh, it's not smooth, is it? Skybird 1, JFK ground control here. Come in, please. Over. Now what? Skybird 1 here, JFK. What can we do for you? Over. We've cancelled all air traffic to and from here. That is all except yours. The weather conditions are very bad. Under normal conditions, you would have been diverted. But as emergency procedures are underway, that is impossible. Also, the state of your aircraft makes the diversion dangerous. You have the whole airport to yourself. Your designated runway is East 7. Did you get that? Over. Yes, thank you, JFK. Out. Dave, we're losing hydraulic fluid fast. Drifting again. The quicker we get to JFK, the better. Keep your eyes glued to that horizon indicator. The autopilot's gone. We're diving. Manual now. Come on. Up. Up. He's responding. Take the aileron controls. Hurry! He's coming around. More! Come on! Nearly there. There! Wow. Nearly copped it. That was too close for comfort. We're 500 feet above the drink. This storm. 350 feet. Brace yourself. 400. Afterburner. Now. One, two, three, four, five. That's it. 2,500 feet. Take her up a bit more. 3.5 will do. Will do. He throw. He throw. Sorry, not replying. I was occupied at the time. Hello, Skybird One. Glad you're back with us. JFK was worried. You disappeared off the radar screens. Nothing else we can do for you. The channel will stay open. Over. JFK, you're not the only one. Over. Hello, Captain. Everything all right? Oh, sorry, Sheila. I forgot about the rest of the crew. You shaken up? Yes, I got a bang on the head. What happened? Well, no time to explain now. We're having technical hitches. How are the passengers? Oh, shaken, of course, but no damage. This storm is awful. Can't we go up? Okay. Sorry, Sheila, we can't. We've got a punctured fuselage. Oh, what? A hole in the side. Sorry, Captain, I heard first time. But how it's so incredible. I'll tell you about it when we touch down. All right, then. Do you want anything? Captain, control column is becoming increasingly hard to manipulate. That's to be expected. We're losing that hydraulic fluid very fast now. JFK should be coming in soon. Now, what's the situation? Automatic pilot has been knocked out. Cabin pressure is the same. Fluid tank, 58% full. That's bad. It would be better to lower the undercarriage now, just in case it packs up before we get there. There's a beautiful green light shining. Good. It's down. Now, what else? Number two engine seems to have sorted itself out. Things are looking up. Drifting is under control. Hmm. Hmm. Right. Let's hang on. We'll get there yet. Brake pressure has dropped a bit. Not too bad, though. How are the reserves? Fine. They haven't been touched. Excellent. Check on how much afterburn fuel. Uh, about six seconds worth. We may need that. Throttles? Check. Temperature reading in the tail is rising. That's odd. Fire? No, it couldn't be. Short circuits, maybe. The electrical systems of automatic pilot must be going haywire. We're still in the air, and that's where I aim to stay. Oh, what's happened to JFK? Well, no doubt we're on their radar screens, being put through hundreds of computers in a true American style. <laughs> Most probably. Uh, what are you going to do with our excess fuel? Jettison as much as possible before touchdown. I'm not going to fly around in circles to do it. I'm going to put this crate down as soon as possible. It's rather unhealthy to stay up here. At least the storm has abated a bit. That's a consolation. Oh, here we go again. Tail stress is increasing. A weakening tail assembly? Unfortunately, yes. It's getting bad, Dave. Very bad. Six minutes to go. Where is JFK? Shall I call them up? You can't. Our transmitter equipment is damaged. We can't even hear Heathrow. Receiving? Only on high frequency from JFK. We're in the radius now. We should be in contact. They should have got us there. They should have? Yes. I'm hoping they don't think our whole radio system is packed up. Oh, hey. Uh, uh, our stroppy companion's coming around. Oh, why did he choose to wake up now? Tap him again, David. We've got enough on our hands without another brawl in here. 1959. Musardi. Oh, don't worry, honey. I'll get him. I'll get him. He won't get away with it. He's nearly gone. Soon. Soon. What are you saying, man? Speak up. Speak up, I 
understand. Leave him, Dave. JFK are coming through again. We've regained contact. Skybird one. Skybird one. Are you receiving us? I'll talk you in. Drop speed to 650. 650, Skybird one. Throttle's giving trouble. Easy. How am I doing? Beautifully. 650 it is. Degrees north, northeast. Five degrees, three minutes to touchdown. Keep it up. Temperature's getting a bit high in that tail. Captain, manual linkage is becoming slack. Hold on, Dave. Hold on. What's happened to JFK? We're still on receive, and it's working. There must be something wrong there. Let's hope so. Drop to 1,000. Right. Speed down to 600. At least we're on the right flight path. Sorry, Skybird 1. Trouble in our transmission. 20 kilometers to go. Take her up 200. You're getting a bit low. Up two, two, zero. We can't do it. Yes, we can. Make it a two-second burst. Now. That's better. Drop speed to five, nine, zero. Oil pressure on number two. That's in critical danger point. If we don't... We're on fire. Dave, help me to get her up. Skybird 1, you're dropping. Get her up. Get her up. You're at 200 feet. Two second burst. Get up. Get up. That's better. 450. 500. You had me worried there, Skybird 1. The extinguishers are on, Captain. Number 2 engine's not functioning. Visibility here has improved a lot, though it's still raining. Visible contact should be made soon. Two minutes to go. Eight kilometers. Keep speed at five zero zero. What's stalling, Dave? I'm increasing throttles. Height five hundred. Linkage is getting worse. We're nearly there. Six kilometers. Take height down to four fifty. It's looking good. Alter flight path two degrees. Reduce three five zero feet. Yes, that's good. There's a surface wind of seven knots, so it could come in handy. You're dropping too fast. That's better. You're doing well. It's beautiful. You're right on course. Keep her there. Two zero zero feet. It's too low. Get her up. No go. Soon. Soon, honey. Soon. Come on, darn you. Up. Up. One hundred feet and drop it. Seventy feet. Fifty feet. Twenty feet. Too much fuel on board. Can't. Go. Losing control. Stalling. One second burst. Now. Reverse engines! survivor. Ironically enough, it must have been Stuart's body that shielded me from that dreadful explosion. In hospital, I received the report on Andrew Stewart. He was David Evans's cousin, though they never met each other during their lifetime. They didn't even know of each other's existence. Evans shot Stuart's pregnant wife at Masadi in 1959. Stuart got his revenge by placing into a freight compartment acid canisters which were set to explode at 40,000 feet. Who said that revenge is sweet? Adventure is produced by Anne Freed 
and directed by Henry Duffenthal. 